What's up y'all, it's Jam and Sam, and today we're going to restore the Battle Pyramid Summit music from Pokemon Emerald. Now, this is uh, just four bars of audio. I've already loaded my MIDI in here. <clears throat> so this will be pretty short, it's just uh, seven channels and four bars of audio. Cool. Nice easy day today. Let's go solo this, and actually I have to load my instrument file so that I can hear the ones from the game, not just general MIDI. La di da dum do, do dum da da di do, na 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 na. Lovely. We have a harp with a little pan sweep. At least it's a slow pan, kind of a slow pan sweep this time. So <clears throat> nothing crazy so far. Let's go and add in our. Sound Canvas VA. And let's call this Harp. And now let's uh, set the volume to be 150%. And let's set the patch, first patch, to be a Harp with no reverb. <clears throat> okay. And now let's copy our notes. Actually, okay, so this is going to be changing our. Chan, our, what is it, our volume is unchanged. And then let's copy our notes. Let's find first empty, call it melody. And then paste this here. Lovely. Now let's go and grab our panning for this. <clears throat> okay, and now we want to create uh, two different channels here so that the release can have a chance to ring out. So let's go to Generator's Harp, and then we'll paste this panning to uh, Pan 1, which is where what we have playing right now. <clears throat> and now I want to split this up into sort of... Um, Two different channels equally so but we have a lot of center as well as um as we might just put it into three channels just to be safe because we can um and this is pretty uh let's see so we have this is going to be to the left so let's say that we'll start out with our left, we'll have our left channel in um, channel one. <clears throat> and, um, hmm. Let's uh, go ahead and split it into three, that'll make it easier. Um, so we have this is channel one, and then center will be channel two then. Let's see, I think we have this. Yes, this is channel two. And then let's hear these two notes. Will be channel, will be also <clears throat> center. <clears throat> and then these three notes will be center. <clears throat> All right, now you see, you kind of see where we're going with this. It's like, da, da. <clears throat> All right, so this will now be channel two. And let's go and make channel two a uh, harp as well. Lovely. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> 
And now let's go and remove all the center pans from the uh, automation. Wait a second, that was a left pan. <clears throat> okay, so now we have two dimensions. <clears throat> but I'm still, I still want it to feel a little more natural. So I'm going to go ahead and split the left channel as well. Let's send the left channel to three. <clears throat> I mean the right channel, not the left channel. Up is right. Oh, oh wait, that's because, okay. So while I do this, I have to make sure that I'm not selecting any uh, channel 2 notes, because we already, like, conformed the uh, <clears throat> parts, so let's do that, and... Here is cha where channel 2 starts. Okay, so now this all goes to channel 3, <clears throat> and then we'll go and make channel 3 also a harp with no reverb. Lovely. <clears throat> Yo, hey, we got some activity in here. Welcome, welcome, y'all. Yo, welcome, Sega Herman. Welcome, uh, I'm, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. Thank you for your music, DK2 Token Tango version 2023. You're welcome. Right, uh, Rusty Zone Act 1, Rusty Ruin Zone Act 1, like the big peeps. Ah, yes, thank you. Ah, welcome, Martin. Came across your channel not long ago, was overjoyed with the quality of your stores. Thank you so much for your hard work. You're welcome, Sato Senpai. Welcome to the stream. Still listening to Hothead Bop. Ayo, nice. <clears throat> All right, so we've got some fun stuff going on in here. I think I forgot to turn off the reverb on part two. <clears throat> and now let's go. We're going to copy this uh, panning to pan three. But FL Studio gives us some space that we don't want, so we're going to go and cut that. And then now... This is going to be our right channel, so I just want to sort of remove all the uh, left-facing parts. Then we can have a natural transition between notes. Nice, that's lovely. Okay, now this part doesn't really matter because there's no notes here. This is before our right, our, our right pan notes, but we can just... 
take that out for posterity. Now let's go back to our pan one and let's remove all of the right facing pan. <clears throat> so now we have no ch sudden changes in our pannings that would make the uh, notes feel unnatural. <clears throat> so now that pan really sort of feels like it's moving. That's very good. Lovely. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's move on to our next thing. Looks like we have one singular string note, so let's clone our harp. And it's fluctuating on the, uh, the uh, volume is fluctuating, so we'll have some volume automation on that. Let's hold Alt and push this down. Let's call this strings. And now let's make this, so let's go to part one. And make this a string, an ensemble strings. And now this pan we're going to reset. Okay. So now let's copy this, let's grab this note. Actually, I can just do like this, just click this note and remember that this is a C5. And then instead in the clipboard, we can add, we can bring our uh, volume automation over there. So let's go to Melody, head over to Melody. We will add this C, uh, C note, but let's make it channel one. Okay, now let's add in our volume automation. <clears throat> Lovely. Okay, that sounds very nice. Now let's go and... Um, let's go and uh, go to the next thing. This is a, uh, I think this is a square because I remember listening to the original that the square sort of did this motion. So I'm pretty sure that this is a square, but it's not playing it because uh, I think we have a bad map here. It's not really pointing to anything. Usually the square points to, yeah. So I'd say that it's probably pointing to that. Let me go and confirm with the uh, by adding in the uh, recording. <clears throat> let's remove GBA Muse Ripper shameless self promotion tag, and let's also trim out the silence here. Trim out the silence. Let's play. So see, we have so yeah. It sounds like uh, what is pretty solidly some very some very low bass, some sub bass. Uh, whoops, sub bass square notes. So let's go and head over to our remasters and origins, and add in our square, and <clears throat> right under this MIDI channel here. Now, let's copy this. Uh, this thing here and let's find first empty and call this a base. So we'll put this in a base pattern. Now let's paste this here. Now let's turn off our uh, release. I didn't really hear of any release in there. Lovely. Yeah, it's perfect. <clears throat> I like it. Okay, now let's go um See, we don't really have any volume stuff going on here. We're panning, so let's move on to this. Our choir. This is the first time, this is the only time we have our choir in this game, I believe. This comes from the Pro Samples Volume 13 disc. So let's see. Hmm. Oh, oh, I know what happened. I didn't make this. The, the samples I found only were only just raw samples. They weren't built into a patch. So I have to build them into a patch myself. And I made a mistake. So now let's save that. And now when I look at Polyphone, which is my sound font editor, it ruins FL Studio's output. So now I have to go.
Okay, so now we can go and reload this uh, thing. <clears throat> okay. And now it's still not working for some reason. Oh, because um, it couldn't save it, so it's still just called acquire TMP. Okay, so this needs to go away. And now this, we're going to go to Windows Shell menu, which will, and properties, will us, which will allow us to rename it to choir. Uh, but now it's already open in FL Studio, so we can't do that. So let's load something else temporarily. And then we'll go. Where did it, what happened? Didn't, uh, oh, here's the dialogue here. Yes. Okay, so now we've got it. Now let's go and re uh, refresh, reread the structure. Now we have our choir. Let's pay paste that into here. Okay, now we have our choir. Now I'm hope these no this does these samples do not loop. It just goes back to the beginning. So I hope this will be long enough. Let's see, it should be. I think I hope these notes aren't going to be too long. So let's go and copy them, paste. Oh no, they are too long. Okay, well that's. That's okay because I these notes are so close together that it plus that one sample that in one in the middle there sort of has this oh it has this rise in it that was in the game that was really sort of uh, iconic I feel like actually instead of doing that I'll just go and record it from the uh, from Edison. <clears throat> Okay, so this, it was this note, this E. See, it has this, oh, it has this scoop, scoop up. But this one doesn't have it. Oh. So we want to record this note, and then that'll make it easier to loop. Let's go. Okay, so now we see that it doesn't loop. So let's trim it down to the part, to the full, to the sample. Like trim the looping out, or it loops back to the beginning. And then let's go trim this silence. Trim out the silence. And let's drag this in here under our choir. And let's go and paste, cut the notes. Paste them here. Now we can set our root note to be an E. Oh, but it's up here. Okay, now what we want to do is I want to trim out, make the length like this, trim out the end, and then I want to crossfade it. So that'll make it an instant loop. But now we still hear a dip in there. Why is that? Hmm, maybe... <clears throat> Sometimes it doesn't really work too well. Uh, maybe there is already... Actually, yes, I see sort of a... a place where it could possibly loop here. Maybe if we do this... Now that sounds pretty good. You might notice there's a pop in there. That's because we really have to zero in and make this like on the vibration. This looks like an like a pretty like they both the uh, right and left channels cross at the same place so in this vibration, this part. So let's go and try to find that. I think it's here. Okay. Let's go and play that. No, it's still uh, popping a bit. 
So let's go and try to uh, pick a different spot. Let's try this. Here's another place where they cross. I also want to actually, maybe if I do the lowest, like a low volume moment, that would be easier to sort of pick out because I can recognize that this is the same place. This would be where it loops. So let's go here. <clears throat> I would say this is probably where we were. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's working out. Hmm. Uh, it looks like these might actually be two different parts. Actually, yeah, I don't think those were actual looping parts. Let's see. Try that. I hear like very minimal less popping there. Let's try here. This is like a very low note, a very low volume note or part of vibration. Okay, well, that's as good as it's going to get. Let's try to get the rest of that out by tuning the loop. No. Try and use the full one, full uh, sample, really. At least after sort of the transient part. Okay, let's try and tune that loop. This is a lot more difficult than I thought. Now it still has that dip in there. Oh, that's a lot better. Maybe that's our uh, good loop point. Let's try that. I like that a lot. All right, let's drag that in there, see how it fares. Lovely. Let's give that a little bit of release. <clears throat> okay, there's our uh, choir sample. Let's save this. Oops. Perfect. Now we can delete this choir uh, patch. We don't need it anymore. And we can also remove this from the project. Now let's go and drag the choir sample in there so we're not just using something called... Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Pretty seamless. All right.
Let's get a little more release on that. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now let's go and, um... Let's go and check out if we have any uh, volume stuff on here. Yes, we do. We have like a volume dip. Volume starts to sort of dips out. Um, but I, let's see. Yeah, that, yeah, that'll do. Now let's go and go to Melody. And now we have some automation here that's extending it out uh, for no reason. So let's go to Project. Melody. Now, this is something that uh, the MIDI always does. It gives us this automation that we don't need at the end. That it has no reason for being there. Like this. <clears throat> Lovely. Okay. And now, let's go put in our uh, automation. Oh, wait. FL Studio forgot our selection. It does that sometimes. It's uh, a little forgetful. Let's copy this. Over here. Now we have this little fluctuation in the notes. That's because of the release jumping back up. So what I want to then do... <clears throat> instead of using this, I want to use a note, note fade. So let's go click this. <clears throat> let's drag this down to zero. Lovely. I like it. <clears throat> okay. No vibrato or anything. Um, and we don't have any uh, pitch bends. Okay, so let's now go and look at this. We have tubular bells. So let's go and clone the strings. <clears throat> Call this tubular bells. Hold alt and push down until it's under that MIDI channel. Now let's go and copy these notes to melody. And then let's select channel one and alt C to change it. Now let's make this patch a uh, tubular bells patch. Nice. Now let's raise the cutoff. Nice. <clears throat> now we had some panning goings on. Let's see what that's all about. So let's copy this. Go to Melody, paste this here. Now, what are these changes? Where do they coincide? How do they coincide with the uh, with the uh, notes? Okay, so this one actually it looks like it changes between like in the middle of a note. No, so we have these uh, these first two notes. Okay, let me readjust my view so I can see. Oh, this doesn't make sense. Okay, so this is going to be these first two notes. We're going to convert this to note pan. No, actually, the uh, VST can't take note pan. So this first two notes are going to be left. Let's keep those channel one. And this uh, second channel, this uh, right facing note, let's go to channel two with that. And then this right facing note, let's also go to channel two. And so on. But this is changing in between notes. Why is that? That is wild. Hmm, 
does it really do that? Let me check. I don't think it's going to be, it's going to, I think it'll sound better if we do that. If we don't, uh, <clears throat> we don't make it change like that. So, this would be left, this would be right, but it's a little, it's just a little offset for some reason. I'm going to chalk that up to a MIDI glitch. Hmm. This one too. Okay. <clears throat> so it looks like pretty solidly we have every other note switching. So let's um go to note pan. Actually, no, we're going to uh, switch this channel too. Okay. So now let's copy this automation. And instead of putting it on the overall panning, let's go and put it in the individual pan of the first channel. Okay, good. Now let's go and put it also on the second pan. And now in the first pan, we're going to remove all the right facing things. <clears throat> and then in the second pan, we're going to remove all the left facing things. Okay, now this one I think has some stuff at the end that we don't need. Let's go ahead and remove that, very good. Now, let's go ahead and make part two also a tubular bell. Lovely. It sounds like the volumes are, too, are very low here, okay. In part one, hmm. Ah, they're panned. Uh, there's still the pan. I have to reset the knob. Okay. <clears throat> nice. All right. That sounds good. Now, do we have any volume in this? Yes. Okay. Let's copy that. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Let's turn this uh, up because these are really quiet now. Sounds like he really wanted it to just be flowing in and out. Okay. Now we have two sort of square notes. And so these are gonna be separate from the square base. So let's go. Add this in here. Copy this, and then we'll go find first empty, call it synths. Paste it there. And now uh, this one is going to be center, so we don't have to do anything there, but this one, we're gonna copy that from the piano roll. 
so we can blend it with this data. This one is going to be panned to the right, so let's go and move all the note pan all the way up. Okay, lovely. Now, I don't think this is supposed to have release. Nope, so let's turn off the release. Actually, does it have to have any envelope at all? Yes. So let's go and now I keep everything a mixer track now that we have all our notes. Actually, let me see if there's supposed to be volume envelopes on this. No. Okay, so let's go give this a mixer track. <clears throat> Drag in the default and turn it way down to 15, way down 15 decibels and call it square. Okay. And let's call this one base just for just so there's no confusion. <clears throat> All right. And let's remove the chorus. Just want to see if there's any detuning going on here. There is detuning, okay. So let's say this lower one. Actually, I'm not really sure which one it is. It's the purple one. Okay. So the purple one, we'll click on and then shift C to select them all. And then we'll go put the note, put the uh, note fine pitch a little bit up. But I can't really, I have to zoom in here. Okay, this is about 50 cents. That's going to be way too detuned. Let's try 20 cents. Lovely. I'll try 30. Oh, that's too much. We'll have to check on the uh, original. But that sounds pretty good. Now let's go on to our bass. Give it a mixer track. Let's make sure this peaks at six. Now this, I don't want too much highs because it's kind of bright for a bass. Nice. All right. Let's drag in our default, but now that brightness is going to go away, so let's reintroduce it there. Let's call this bass. And let's turn it down so that it peaks at about six on the master. Lovely. Let's remove the chorus. Okay, now let's go to our melody. Let's give the harp a mixer track. And now we have something else making the uh, making extra space that we don't need. So let's go to patterns, melody, and see what the last thing we added in was. That was volume. So this is something bad in the volume. Yes. Okay. Now let's give everything a mixer track. Okay, now let's start dragging in our um, default mixer. Hi, Jamie. Welcome. <clears throat> so our harp is here. Let's call this harp. I think that sounds really good. Let's just sort of raise the exciter. And now let's call this strings. Now this, let's uh, raise the saturation.
lovely. Now let's raise the exciter. And sort of we raise the brightness a little bit. Nice. Now let's call this choir. Now let's boost the saturation. Now let's raise the exciter. Boosted the brightness a little bit. Nice. Let's call this tubular bells. You might be able to raise the uh, <clears throat> saturation a little bit. Let's end the exciter. Okay, and now let's um, add in transpire because we want a sharp transient on that. Nice. Okay, let's go and dock this ran this uh, track to the right. Let's make a reverb. Make it a reverb bus. Let's give it a reverb plugin. Let's make this a hall shape and give it 12% power. Let's route this. All of these uh, things that are playing, let's route them to the route them to the reverb. Okay, lovely. Now let's put it all together. Melody is here. Bass is down here, and synths are here. Now we can just loop this real quick. And since it's such a short loop, let's go and fade it out instead of giving it an ending, because there's really nowhere. This, this uh, song does not really go anywhere. It is just a static sort of atmosphere static loop so let's go and just fade that out as an ending lovely now let's add in a maximus nice now we currently don't have very much on our lows let's go and boost the uh Bass a little bit, but I don't think I think we might not get full bass on this because this is like just a little bit too much. Ah, yes. Well, maybe we can do with the full bass. Yes, full bass volume. Okay. Now our highs. Let's limit between three. Let's limit at three. Let's boost them a little bit. I want them to fill out this space a little more. <clears throat> Actually, no, let's not. Let's give them some room to breathe since this is a very flowy track. Now, my highs, let's cap at 9. And they're currently a little underwhelming, so let's fill them out a little bit. Hmm. I think given how simplistic this is, <clears throat> um, actually no, I want my base to be there. Um, let's not fill it, let's just not fill it out like that. Okay, that's good. Nice, okay. I like that a lot. Nice, that's really crisp. Frontier Brain is gonna sound amazing. Hey, wait, yes. This also sounds amazing. I'm like, wow. It's like a... Very relaxing.
<clears throat> All right, so I'll let you guys listen to that a couple times more while I do my naming and saving. Let's call this Battle Pyramid Summit. Okay, so that's very good. This will be on YouTube um, tomorrow. <clears throat> and that's all that. All right, so we have been on for about 45 minutes. This took us 45 minutes. All right, y'all. Let's, um, we're going to call it for a night for tonight. And then we'll come back tomorrow with, uh, I think, Frontier Brain is next. Is Frontier Brain next? Yes, Frontier Brain is next. Ooh, this is gonna be some crazy stuff. Wow. And this is three minutes long? That's gonna be a big day. Well, it did. It's not totally three minutes long. It's uh, three minutes long with the loop, so it's probably about a minute and a half of unique audio. <clears throat> Okay, so that's going to be a big one. All right, y'all. Thanks for coming to the stream, and this is Jam and Sam signing off. Until tomorrow. Cheers.